reports tonight that special counsel Robert Mueller is expected to issue indictments very soon. This, of course, as the Russia investigation gets a new boss and acting attorney general Matt Whitaker and Democrats still are demanding that he step aside. Correspondent Garrett Tenney is looking into what we know about what's next from the Mueller team. Shannon, great to be with you. Good to have you. Uh, one of the big parts of this investigation so far has been the hacked emails that WikiLeaks released during the 2016 campaign. And investigators want to know if anyone with or close to the Trump campaign knew about that ahead of time or helped coordinate the leaks. Now, longtime Trump advisor Roger Stone has been a central figure in that probe, and Mueller has interviewed several of Stone's associates about it, including Jerome Corsi, a former reporter for InfoWars. Back in 2016, Corsi told friends he believed WikiLeaks had the emails of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta and would release them as an October surprise, which they did. Of course, he says for the past two months, he has cooperated with investigators who believe that he had a secret contact with WikiLeaks and then acted as a middleman to share information with Roger Stone, both of which he denies. But on his YouTube channel Monday, of course, he said this past week, those negotiations blew up and he now believes he walked into a perjury trap. I fully anticipate that in the next few days I will be indicted by Mueller for some form or other of giving false information to the uh, special counsel. But I'm going to be criminally charged. And uh, this has been one of the most frightening experiences in my life. Sources close to the president's legal team tell Fox News the special counsel's probe is, quote, winding down. And that the WikiLeaks issue is one of the final pieces. If that's true, legal expert Jonathan Turley says there is a lot of pressure on Mueller to find evidence of direct collusion or coordination rather than simply charges of perjury. If the culmination of this investigation will be someone like Stone or Corsi, it looks like you're running around shooting the wounded. I mean, it, there, there's not, there still isn't a clear there there in terms of a central figure doing some substantive criminal act. There's also been a lot of pressure coming from Democrats for acting Attorney General Matt Whitaker to recuse himself from overseeing the Russia investigation. The Justice Department tells us Whitaker is now consulting with DOJ ethics officials to see if he should take that step. Shannon. All right. Garrett Tenney, thank you very much for you the updates. All right. Our own Catherine Harris reporting tonight that President Trump's legal team is close to finalizing and submitting written answers to questions from special counsel Robert Mueller. Could happen by the end of this week. So let's bring in tonight's legal eagles to talk about that and more. Both former deputy assistant attorneys general Harry Littman and John Yu. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Hi Shannon. Okay, so Hi, let's, Shannon. Uh, let's start with this news tonight that these written questions could be in by the end of the week. There's been so much back and forth for months over this. Reuters reporting this. It says the questions from special counsel Robert Mueller that Trump is preparing to answer relate only to Moscow's involvement in the election and not to whether Trump may have tried to obstruct the Russia investigation, according to a source. Harry? Uh, yeah, that, you know, that's what's being reported, and, and I think it, it, it sounds plausible. But the one thing is, I do not think, notwithstanding all the back and forth, that we can see this as the final product. I, I just think it's very unlikely that Mueller would accept uh, written answers and nothing more. You just really mm -hmm. need to see someone across the table and, uh, and see their tone, et cetera. So um, if these answers do come in at the end of the week, and remember, we've had a lot of sort of false starts uh, yeah. in, in these kinds of accounts from the president's team, I don't think it means that Mueller is done trying to get information from the president. Well, John, the consensus has been for most of his legal team and, and all of us giving him free advice is to not sit down with Mueller. I mean, it's clear they don't think it's a good idea, although the president says he wants to do it. Uh, Shannon, I've always thought that it was in Trump's best interest to go sit down with Mueller, sit across from the table, as Harry Littman says, and answer his questions. Uh, the, the key last act is going to be when Trump's team hands over these written questions and Mueller decides that there still needs to be more questions asked. And then he's going to have to decide whether to seek a subpoena from a court, mm -hmm. a grand jury, I'm sorry, to get the president to actually show up in person. That's why Whitaker is so important, because the attorney general or the acting attorney general, if he's indeed constitutionally in the office, which I don't think he is, but if he were, the attorney general could stop that subpoena from issuing. And then I think it ends and then Mueller has to go issue his report. 
But if the attorney general says, go ahead, issue the subpoena, then you do have that interview. The president, I think he should sit down. He, under the Constitution, is a chief law enforcement officer. I think it sets a bad example for the president of the United States to refuse to sit down and answer questions from federal prosecutors who are, after all, his subordinates in the constitutional scheme. Well, you know, there are a lot of folks who think that, listen, some of the key players who've gotten in trouble here, it's not for what they've done, it's for statements that they've made, and there are very much worries that there could be traps set for the president. But quickly, I want to get you both to weigh in on this idea that maybe if we get indictments, we're maybe talking about Roger Stone, maybe Jerome Corsi. Um, if that's as far as Mueller goes, and we have no idea, um, you know, you heard Professor Turley there saying, you know, that, that's not real impressive. Harry, you first. Uh, well, yes. Uh, you know, first of all, rule number one, you don't know what he's got until he brings it out. If he does get to Stone, though, Shannon, if it's really clear that Stone knew about uh, the WikiLeaks uh, hacking before it happened, then we really are sort of a half step from the president. So whether or not the president testifies, Stone, it's clear, was in personal contact with him during the campaign. So look, I agree in the sense with uh, Professor Turley, if it starts there, it, you know, it seems unsatisfying. Uh, on the other hand, st it, it may well be at the president's door even if the ultimate um, uh, recommendations by Mueller have to be based on circumstantial evidence, inference, and the like. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's quite possible if Stone falls, which I think is very likely, mm. that uh, that there'll be very that that then the president is in the crosshairs. John, final word to you. I expect Mueller will go after Corsi and Stone, but I, I have to disagree with my friend Harry that these are significant figures in the co Trump campaign. The one thing that we've seen is that Trump is just sort of surrounded by all these kind of grifters, weirdos, conspiracy theorists, mm -hmm. just because they're all conspiring and trying to prove how important they are doesn't mean they actually had any real role in the Trump campaign. This guy, Corsi, he's a conspiracy theorist who thinks, you know, President Obama wasn't born in the United States, who thinks, like, someone else blew up the World Trade Center on 9-11. Mm. I mean, these are just not central figures in the Trump campaign. So I expect Mueller, if he gets those scalps, Corsi, he gets the scalps from Stone, a dirty tricks guy, all the way from the Nixon years, that still doesn't mean it's going to be enough, I think, to go after the president or to justify something like an well, impeachment. And we'll see if there's another round of questioning after the written questions, as Harry, you brought up today, uh, too. So thank you both. Great to have you with thank us tonight. You,